All right, you got a nice shot of my messy kitchen, but we're gonna go ahead and start anyway. This is episode two of Dinner To Go. Today, I'm doing a baked ziti and a freezer meal, which is orange, ginger, chicken, and broccoli. So I'm gonna do the baked ziti first because the freezer meal chicken is not completely thawed yet. What you got, baby? Come here, let me see. We went blueberry picking this morning. Come over here so everybody can see how lovely you are. Is that three cups? Mm -hmm. All right, let's put four cups in each bag. We just uh, scoop our blueberries into the bag. We don't even wash them. We wash them when we use them um, rather than washing them now because we don't want them to stick together in one big clump. But enough about that. She's handling that. So with the baked ziti today, I have ziti. Um, sometimes I have to get penne. Sometimes I have to get the big noodle. It just depends on what's available. I usually start with a good jarred sauce, but also a great recipe for sauce that I use from time to time is on all recipes for world's best lasagna. I make that recipe to the letter and people love it and we'll get to that in another episode. To my sauce, I'm gonna add garlic. I have some basil here. I have oregano, Italian seasoning. If you just have Italian seasoning, that's fine. I'll probably taste it, put a little cayenne pepper in it, maybe even put a little brown sugar in it. Um, what you need, baby? Okay. And then I will let that sauce simmer on the stove with some bay leaves. And that will be the base of my sauce. To that, I will add sausage. Now, I used ground breakfast sausage and the Italian sausage that comes in the casing, and I'll show you what that looks like. So take a look at this. While I was being so smart telling you what I was going to do today, I burnt the garlic in the bottom of my pan. Smells so good in my kitchen. This is the Italian sausage I'm talking about. Sweet Italian sausage. And I've put a new pot on the stove so I can begin again, hopefully without burning my garlic. So all we're gonna do is get that sauce to simmering with all of the spices and then get our meat going in a separate pan. I've mentioned before that I just use this jarred chopped garlic in water. I'm gonna put it in the pan first again since I burnt the first one. I use a good recipe for spaghetti sauce, and then honestly, if you're interested in this business, you already know how to cook, so just keep tasting it until it tastes like what you want it to be. I love Classico, tomato basil, roasted tomato and garlic, sweet basil. Um, I love this sauce. I add some more spices and ingredients to it. But I love it because mason jar lids fit on top of it. Now, recently I've gotten some that has a different type lid, and I really hope they aren't changing the lid. I will probably still buy the sauce just because it's so delicious. But I really enjoyed saving these. Um, they're pretty jars. I don't know if you can see it. It says Atlas. It's got the little cup markings on it. They're very pretty jars and they work well to recan your garden produce with. If I use a jarred sauce, I put about an inch of water in the bottom and get the rest of the sauce out just so it's not wasted. I just go from jar to jar, getting all that extra sauce out. I know there's probably someone watching who would never ever use a jarred spaghetti sauce it works well for convenience if the spaghetti sauce is delicious like this one and it works well for bulk because you can measure how much sauce you need which is about a half a cup per person um, for each jar of sauce that i add and these jars are 24 ounces 
I add about a teaspoon extra of garlic, Italian seasoning, basil, and oregano. If you just want to do Italian seasoning, then that would be a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Then I probably add for each jar that I use um, less than a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper and about a teaspoon of brown sugar and then for each jar that I use or for each two jars that I use I put a bay leaf and I let that sauce simmer. Need to pick up some more oregano. Mixing all of that in, letting that sauce simmer. We're cooking our meat separately so that I don't add any extra um, grease or oil to make this a greasy dish. I do believe fat adds flavor, so I don't wash my meat once I'm finished. But I don't want to add all of the oil that comes off the meat. I'll let that simmer for at least 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes if I'm working on something else, it gets to simmer a little longer. Um, it just depends on what I'm doing that day. I'm breaking all the sausage down. I don't want it into a fine crumble. I like for it to be a good bite-sized piece. I do add peppers to this sometimes and, and call it sausage and peppers baked ziti. That's not quite as popular as just the sausage baked ziti that I layer with mozzarella cheese. We'll see that in just a little bit. Put the Italian sausage in now. I don't do them separate for any reason. I just didn't have enough room in my pot, but you have to take the casing off the Italian sausage. It's very easy to do. And the sausage is soft inside. It adds a great flavor to the ziti. You'll just put all of those in and then roughly chop them up like the other sausage and then you'll add it all to the sauce. Your recipe, if you're using a recipe for baked ziti, will tell you how much meat to use. If you're just making your own favorite sauce and you want to use that in a baked ziti, I usually use one pound of meat per four people if the meat is the entree, but if it's going into a sauce, you can allow one pound of meat per every eight to ten people because the sauce has other ingredients in it, and so it can go further that way. for our ziti and our noodles are getting cooked we're going to put together the orange ginger chicken and broccoli now this is a freezer meal so I use freezer bags for the small I use a quart bag for halves and full sizes I use the gallon size bag and I always write if I can remember before I put the things in the bag and so what I include on this is the size the name of the dish and the cooking instructions. So, for instance, this is a small chicken and broccoli. Um, I'm, I meant to put orange chicken, orange chicken and broccoli. And then all of the freezer meals are the same. You can dump them into your skillet for 10 to 15 minutes and keep stirring it or you can put them in your crock pot frozen low four to six hours high three to four hours 
So I put that on the bag, I write it on there, so that when they want to pull this out of their freezer, they can, and they have the instructions right there. And so I've got my ingredients together for the sauce. I've got um, an orange ginger sauce. I've got garlic. I've got a little bit of sriracha, some honey. Um, and then sometimes if I have it, I will grate an orange rind in there. That's also really good. Uh, sometimes if the ginger sauce isn't very gingery, I will grate some fresh ginger or use the little ginger out of a tube. Um, all of that, all of that are good add-ins. So I'm going to use these items. Let me grab a bowl. I'm going to mix up my sauce. I really don't have a lot of orders for this today. So I won't need much. Um, I have an orange ginger sauce. You can find a recipe for this online. I kind of make it up because I use a really delicious orange ginger sauce and just add some things to it. But you can find it online also. So I've got my orange sauce. I've tasted it and it's not quite sweet enough. So to that, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of honey. Let's see, this was a 20 ounce jar of orange sauce. I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon of sriracha. And I'm going to add about two. <laughs> no, probably about four teaspoons of garlic. It's very gingery, so I won't need to add any ginger. Like I said, you can find a recipe for crock pot um, ginger orange chicken. It'll give you the serving sizes. What I do is today I've got one small order, which is two servings, and I've got one half size order which is four servings and so that's six servings all together when I find my recipe I just multiply those servings to fit what I have um, sometimes especially with broccoli because it will shrink a little bit I add a little more broccoli than is called for in the recipe and then I add four ounces of meat per serving that way you keep your costs exactly where they need to be um, and everybody's satisfied because that is the USDA full serving of meat per person. I have a little scale that I like to use. It's a tailor. I got it at Walmart. It was pretty inexpensive. Once I add what I think is the right amount of chicken to the bag, I put it on the scale that's 9.8, so that's a little more than 8 ounces for the small. And that's 1.5 pounds, so I need to adjust that a little bit. 9.8 is fine with me because these are those ice-glazed chickens, and they contain a lot of, um, it says 15% injected chicken broth, so they're going to shrink a little bit. 1.5 is a little much, so I will swap that out for maybe a smaller piece that I can find, one of the larger pieces. I'll swap that out for a smaller piece and see what happens. Now I'm at 1.3, so that's good for me. I notice that I say to really always pay attention to your quantities, but there's a fine line between paying attention to your quantities and making your customers feel like they got what they paid for so I give a little over on the chicken because I know it's 15% added moisture and I give about one and a half times the broccoli that needs to go because it should be half a cup of broccoli. I give three quarters a cup of broccoli per, per, per person because it's ice glaze also and it's going to shrink. I'm going to wash my hands and we're going to put this together. If you'll keep each recipe on a page in your notebook, you can doctor it and tweak it the way you think it needs to go. Um, 
And that way you'll know each time how much to put into each one. Uh, two cups of broccoli would go for four people, but as I do one and a half servings, I'm going to put three cups, and I mound it up a little bit because the broccoli doesn't fit exactly into this cup. So you want to make sure that everybody receives plenty while at the same time um, being able to keep your profit margins. I see that I have made a mistake here, so let's pause while we fix that mistake. I tossed that broccoli aside. I will cook that for my family because I can make sure that it is cooked well. Put your broccoli in a separate bag. Three cups will fit in a quart freezer bag and the cup and a half for the small serving will fit in just a regular sandwich size bag. It's going down into a freezer bag, so it's okay that it's just in a regular sandwich bag. This is why. If they're putting it in a, into a skillet to cook it, which is one of the ways they can, it's fine. Put it all in there. The chicken and broccoli will cook at the same time. If they choose to put this into a crock pot, get a one and a half cups of broccoli there, the broccoli will be absolute mush by the time the chicken is finished in the crock pot. And I know this from experience. So I package the broccoli separately and put it down into the top of the bag after I add the sauce to the chicken. Uh, keep in mind that I have put all the instructions on the bag so they know to add the broccoli in the last hour of cooking if they're going to do the crock pot. These things are ornery. I can't get that to zip. There we go. I think that's going to zip. I always buy a huge bag of broccoli because my family will eat the leftovers. I think that it is a vile weed, but um, <laughs> most of my family likes it. So like I said, keep a, um, keep a notebook with your recipes or at least your recipe notes if you want to file your recipes online somewhere that's fine. But that will help you know how much sauce you added because you know right now or when I started out, I'm just going to pretend I'm just starting out, I didn't know whether this one needed a half a cup of sauce or a cup and a half. But now that I have all my notes, I know that the half size gets a full cup of sauce and the small would get a half a cup of sauce. And if I had a full size, it would get, come on, a cup and a half of sauce. So you can multiply exponentially with almost everything like that. And then if you make sure that you write down your notes, you'll be able to do that over and over again. Now, <laughs> if you keep your notes on your phone, like I did, and your phone crashes, then maybe you lose three years of notes and you have to do it over. So I did have lots of notes from my early days written down in a notebook and I was so, so thankful because even though I lost all of that on my phone, I was able to go back and look at it on my notebook. So that was great. All right, so these are done. I put them in the refrigerator. Um, you can freeze it for your customers if you want to. We also sell meat, so I really don't have space in my freezer to do that. And they know if they want to, it's freezeable, and they can do that when they get home. This is what it looks like after it's all packaged up. Just that broccoli's in a separate bag, set right down on top of the chicken. Um, I'm going to put this chicken away, probably do something with that for my family for dinner. Note that I have the size of the entree, and I have the name of the entree, and then I have both sets of instructions on there. I put the skillet set, if they forget to put it in the crock pot that night, they can just dump it all into a skillet, make themselves some rice, and dinner is done. If they are proactive and have plenty of time that morning, 
they can put it into the crock pot and have it ready to go when they get home from work or when they get home from school or they can have the kids, you know, add the broccoli when they get home from school. It's all self-explanatory because you're dealing with people who either don't know how to cook, don't like to cook, or don't have time to cook. So you have to make sure that you hit it self-explanatory for all three of those groups of people. Our sauce is simmered for about two hours because I stopped and had lunch during that time. And so it is nice and delicious. What I try to do for any kind of casserole is provide one cup of food per person. They know this, they know it's based on the USDA servings per person, and so that's what they're paying for and that's what they expect. That would be two cups for a small, four cups for a half, and six cups for a full. When I do separate dishes, I provide separate measurements. If it's something like a soup that's really brothy, one and a half cups a person. If it's something like a meat and a vegetable or a meat and a starch, four ounces of meat and then half a cup of the vegetable or the starch per person. Occasionally, I feel a little froggy and I provide some extra and that's okay. I like my customers. They're really kind to me. I never have any trouble with any of them. I have a great relationship with most all of them. And so it's okay every now and then to provide something a little extra. But basically, you need to stick to these measurements or you won't make the little bit of money that you're making. So for a half cup then, because the pasta has holes in it, I'm going to, you know, scoop that big. We're going to, that's for the small size. It's going to get one cup. A little bit overflowing. The half size is going to get two cups of pasta, a little bit overflowing, and then the full size is going to get three cups of pasta. Each of those cups is going to be overflowing just a little bit because there's holes in the ziti, so it doesn't fit in to a perfect cup like it would if, say, it was rice and then this is going to get layered a lot of baked ziti recipes have a layer of cream like lasagna cream in them um, i do not do that because i do a fantastic lasagna and i don't want this just to be um, another little thing like that you know i don't want them to be exactly the same so i don't put that cream layer in mine trying to take a break to let my carpenter finish blowing off the deck so that everybody could hear me well. So I've just spread this pasta out in the bottom of the pan. You've got a serving size for everybody in there and you're going to do the same with the meat sauce and be careful as you do the meat sauce. Um, you can shake it off level. Just be careful that you're not putting one of those bay leaves into someone's ziti, they'll forgive you, but try to get those out. People who don't know how to cook don't know that a leaf in their pasta sauce is normal. So um, try to get those out. Just watch for them as you scoop it. You can go through it before you start to scoop it. Um, you just don't, you don't want a leaf in there if you can help it. And just spread this layer across the top and then we're going to top everything with mozzarella cheese. When I make my list, I try to go to the grocery store one time. I do a pickup at my local grocery store, and then I don't want to go back. But today, I forgot my mozzarella cheese, and so my daughter went out with a friend for lunch, and they're going to bring my mozzarella cheese back when they're finished out on the town. 
just so I didn't have to go to the store. Notice how chunky and delicious that is. I'll give you a close-up. Let's give you a close-up. That didn't, three cups of that didn't quite cover the top of the half-baked ziti. 